With these types of questions, I typically like to just draw a little diagram. You don't have to, but it works out quite nicely. So like I would definitely recommend it. But now some students, okay, so you guys, let me quickly show you something. You get two types of questions. Sometimes you get questions like this. I would say sin theta is equal to three over five and theta is bigger than 90. Then you've got to somehow try to figure out which quadrants you're in. So like this part here would tell you that sin is positive, so that could be there and there. And then they'll tell you that the angle is bigger than 90, which could be there, there, and there. And then you would draw it in this quadrant because both of them are there, okay? But then when you get questions like this, um, they're giving you the angle. See that? They're telling you what the angle is, it's 36. Here they didn't tell you the angle, so you had to figure out where you were. But 36, is in quadrant number one, right? Because that's from zero to 90 degrees. So we know the quadrant, so we can draw our triangle immediately. Now what I like to do is I just put a little one over here because I know that sin is um, opposite over hypotenuse or some students prefer y over r. So that means my opposite is, and, and my angle 36 is here. So I can say one minus square root of one minus p squared and I can put my one there. Um, I always advise learners just to find this angle, just in case you've got a teacher who's going to try to catch you out there. So you just say 180 minus 36 minus 90, and this should be 54 degrees. Just put it there just in case you will need it just now. Okay, now what I then do is I just go do a bit of Pythagoras over here just to find this missing piece. So let's call that missing piece, I don't know, we can call it x. So we can say that 1 squared is equal to this 1 squared plus x squared. And that means 1 squared is equal to 1 minus p squared, because this 2 just gets rid of the square root, plus x squared. And then if I had to get x squared alone, I'm going to end up with uh, p squared, actually because the ones are going to cancel. And so if you take the square root, x is going to be um, just p. You could say plus minus p, but because this is a positive x value, let's just say positive p. Okay, now that we have the triangle, we can go and answer their question. So their first question is tan 36. So we go to the 36 and we use tan, which is either opposite over adjacent, or if you prefer, y over x. And so that's going to end up being opposite over adjacent, and so that's going to be the answer, just like that. Cos of 108 needs to be simplified first, so cos of 108 is the same as cos 180 minus 72. Can you see it? 72, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Ah, it's double 36. So when you see double, we're going to use the double angle formulas. But let's just simplify this. This becomes negative cos 72. And so here you have your choice of which cos 72 because it's a double angle, so you can choose any one of these. Um, I'm just going to go with this middle one. So what I can do is I can say that, uh, now don't worry too much about this negative, it's going to get in the way a bit, but we can just say um, negative cos 72 is the same as negative, then in brackets we can change the cos 72 into uh, this one, so it'll be 1 minus 2 sin squared of 36. Okay, so I just use this one here. And then I'll multiply the negative in, so negative 1 plus 2 sin squared of 36. And then we're almost good to go, so we say minus 1 plus 2, and then sin 36, we already know that that's this one um, up here at the top. Or you could go work it out again from the diagram, and then it's to the power of 2 because they said sin squared over here. So now if you square the square root, the, the square and the square root cancel each other out. So now you would be left with minus one plus two, and then in brackets, one minus p squared. And so that's gonna end up becoming minus one plus two minus two p squared. And so that's gonna be one minus two p squared.